Hello from friends. This is a video that I know I've promised several times, but this afternoon the light just felt right and it just felt like the right time to do this. So it won't be a very long video, but um, at the end I'll also tell you about a Facebook group that I had started uh, several years ago that's all about collecting of stone fruit. People will show displays of their own stone fruit and they'll also um, post some items that are always for sale. Now the items that I have here today, all of these are for sale and I'll post on the screen prices. So again, the best way to reach me for things like this is to email me at gigi4224 at yahoo.com and I'll put that information on the screen as well. And one of the things that's a little bit hard um, about the stone fruit is that it is made from a natural product that is very, very old. So, you know, if you wanted to carbon date it, I would imagine it's still going to be ancient because it's coming from uh, marble. Most of what we have here, or maybe even all of what we have here, is actually made or comes out of Italy. Um, and one of the things that you'll notice as a difference, and I don't have any of those pieces here, but there are some newer pieces now that have been made in the last, I would say probably the last 15 to 20 years, and they're coming out of Mexico. Sometimes the pieces are much brighter in color, and you may also notice that they're much shinier. So in most of those instances, the piece of marble um, the alabaster that they are made from, they are not painted on, they're actually stained. So you'll see that and then they have a very high shine. Um, but that's something, that's a very personal look for you. If that's something that you like and that's something that you want to include in your bowls of stone fruit, that's, this is your art, your home is your personality and it is all the way that you want it to be. I know that sometimes people will take some of those really hard to find pieces. Um, a slice of watermelon, I have owned one in my lifetime. Uh, hopefully I'll come across another one. Many of the pieces that I've had, I have sold over the years. Um, a few of you have noticed that my own personal bowl, bowls of stone fruit don't have the black grapes in them. And I always mention that's something that you really want to include in your collections because that piece of a black within the bowl really makes the rest of the colors pop. But somebody, it was close to Christmas, and someone had messaged me that they wanted one as a gift for a family member, and so that piece went on its way. And in one of these days, I'll come across another one that I'll just need to have, and we'll add it back to my own bowl of fruit. So we say stone fruit or alabaster fruit, um, and it's funny, it just blends so well with our American, early American type collectibles and our, our kitchens or our other kind of pieces, but they are most often made in Italy. And like I said, sometimes they will even have a mark on the bottom, a little tag that says made in Italy, alabaster. Now this piece, I'll just go ahead and talk about these right now. These have a flat bottom on them. And for whatever reason, historically, you'll see this, you'll see this almost everywhere. You'll see them on eBay, you'll see them in person. These do not sell for the same kind of high prices that an actual half piece of stone fruit will sell for. So I brought these out of my shop. I'd had them there for probably a year and a half. And these right now, they are priced at $54 each for these halves. They were made actually to be bookends. Okay, so they would have been bookends. But these with that flat bottom, for whatever reason, and you'll see them in several other type of things. You'll see them in apples, peaches, um, as well as the pears, even sometimes vegetables. But with that bottom, 
that affects the value. So these I have priced at $54. If somebody would like to have these, I would let them go for $45 today each. And again, like I said, all of these pieces are available for sale. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about prices as well because I know that is something that so many people have questions about. Again, it varies, but there are a lot of these pieces that are often available on eBay um, and the prices vary greatly. So this would be one of the older lemons versus this is one of the newer lemons. Hopefully you can see that in the color, the, the difference there. This one is much softer looking, the color. You can kind of see some of the lines of the alabaster, uh, that marble lining, veining going through it. This one has much more of a flat, um, flat meaning all over one color with a little bit of a shine to it and just does not have the same kind of an aged look. But as I was saying, it's so fun to see that these were come out of Italy. They were, it really started around the Victorian era and then went on from there. And then I think also probably one of the big pushes for the export of them happened in the 1940s and 1950s. And many, many more of them um, were exported or came back to the United States as um, collectibles or collector's items for people. And they made these wonderful bowls full of these stone fruit. But as I was saying, they go so well. Yes, they were made in Italy, but they go so well. They blend wonderfully, these muted and soft colors. When so much of our decor sometimes is really muted, you get to have those pops of the orange or the yellows or the reds of like the cherries and strawberries. Um, so again, I'll put on the screen, I'll put on the screen at the end the prices of the pieces, but mostly things like lemons, um, apples. This is a really nice example of an apple. It does have the special carving here on the bottom for the four, the four little points of that, that particular type of apple. You can see in underneath here the lines, the graining that it would have been in a piece of Carrera marble. So these pieces, again, the prices kind of vary. They ebb and flow. Um, I have seen these for something like this, $55, $65, and some even lower than that in the $30 and $40 for those kind of pieces. Again, here's a pair. This one, this is to look like a little piece of a bruise, um, a little nectarine versus a large orange here, um, plums. Again, most often $25, $35. What is so fun about collecting the stone fruit is that, you know, often antique pieces and antique shows, they can have wonderful and beautiful things, but sometimes larger pieces are just outside of the, the budget. But if you can leave with another piece of stone fruit to add to your collection or to your bowl at home. You can leave for maybe $35 or $45 for a piece. And then maybe you just go, well, I'm just gonna, I'm looking for a pear or I'm looking for an apple. And it kind of becomes like a scavenger hunt at these shows. I have on occasion even found a few pieces at Goodwill. Can't say it has happened often. I think it's happened one time. And I wasn't, I, I didn't, that wasn't what I was there looking for. I don't remember what it was. I thought my, I might, oh, I think it was vases for our flower farm that I was there looking for and came across probably five or six lemons. I think they might have been, nope, I don't have any more of those anymore. So again, pricing. Now there are some specialty type pieces. So the little cherries, these typically $55, $65 for cherries, maybe even 75. If they are the dark black cherries, then they may even be more. And one thing also to be mindful of, 
sometimes, and who knows who actually did it, I'm, I would never say that it was that particular seller, but because so many more people are looking for the black fruit, the black grapes, the black cherries, there are occasions where you'll come across some that have been spray painted. And you just have to look closer and get used to the feel and what those colors when they have aged and kind of been knocked around in a bowl and maybe even chewed on by a young person who didn't realize that maybe grandma has stone fruit in her kitchen. So the cher cherries here, we'll do 65 on those. Um, there are other kinds of things other than fruit that are also often uh, done for, out of the alabaster and as collectibles. And some people will just collect nuts. And I think that these are um, an alabaster almond, perhaps even before. Now, these are the, the large almonds. There are also different sizes. This, I thought, was going to start out just being a short video, but there are so many different kinds of things. So there are some really tiny stone fruit pieces. There are these regular, you know, life-size type pieces. And then there's the especially large, like really big apples or really big grapes. Sometimes those are a little bit more associated with mid-century modern collecting. But again, there are nuts that you can find, hazelnuts, almonds, um, peanuts, all kinds of, of nuts. The walnuts, probably the least expensive in that group, um, often in the $55, $65 range of approximately, but again, it's very different depending on condition, depending on where you're at, depending on the show that you're at as well and where in the country. These kind would be more, you know, $95 up to $195. Hazelnuts, again, also could potentially go up to or over $200. And then there's also vegetables. So you'll sometimes see spears of asparagus, um, mushrooms, oh goodness, what else? Um, zucchini, onions, um, just anything that you can think of that would be a uh, vegetable you can find in the alabaster also. And again, the early pieces would have had their finish actually baked on. So they would have been carved. You can sometimes see those carving marks. Then the finish would have been painted and actually baked on. Again, the newer pieces often are stained and uh, or just painted and then they don't have that finish actually baked. So that's, that's the collection that I have here right now. Um, strawberries also, again, another piece that's a little bit higher in price. You'll want to look, most often if it's complete, it has this little green um, piece at the top and then this tiny little stem as well. Hopefully you can see that as well. Um, these maybe are a little bit larger, but you can see all those wonderful chisel marks on those pieces. The banana, another banana. This one in particular has this uh, nice large bruise that the artist had put on. You can see where the black line is for the, for the marble in there. And one of the things that I tell people, sometimes they'll ask, how do you know if it's actually stone fruit? And probably the best way to test whatever that piece is and see that it's not a resin, but actually is a piece of stone fruit. First of all, they're quite heavy. And second of all, if you put it on your cheek, it will always be cold. You know, unless you're outside at a fair or a flea market or something outside, they will always be just icy, icy cold. So that's just kind of a little bit of more information on the, on the fruit. Um, you'll see sometimes the stone grapes will have a green plastic stem. Again, that's gonna be later. That's going to be in your 60s and 70s, probably 1960s, 1970s, when those would have come out. Um, you want to, if you want to have the real vintage or the early look, you want to look for the ones that are attached to, with wire, to a piece of uh, grape, uh, grapevine. All right. Hey, friends. So um, the other couple things I wanted to mention to you also, grapes. Um, 
$125 probably, well, I guess that depends. So if they have the green stem, probably $55, $65, $75. And again, all that, this is my daisy, by the way, my daisy girl. Um, probably $75, $85. Um, with the actual grapevine stem um, and in the natu more natural color, those are going to be up to probably $125 is what I typically would see in our area. And it shows, again, it varies and it varies for how, how special maybe they are. Um, if they are done in the black, uh, you know, painted with the black, then they would be could be over $200, you know, $150 to $200 for that. Um, I do have one half pair that is available for sale, but it does have a break that has been pretty amazingly repaired. You can't see it at all on the back side, but the half pairs are much more rare, um, and it does have, if you can see, it does have a break right here and it does have a chip in the top but just a very unusual with the little seed part here in the in the inset so for the half that's one of those things the half pieces are very precious so peaches um, I have seen 150 to 250 even higher sometimes the peaches will be uh, a half with with the pit I've not ever owned I don't think one of the ones with the peach with the pit in it um, sometimes it'll be a half a peach without the pit again over $150 typically to $250 or more again depending on the condition depending on the age and the size um, apples you'll see sometimes it's a half of an apple sometimes it's a quarter of an apple or three quarters of an apple that makes it even more special um, I have come across them before where it was an apple with a bite out of it or an apple with a bruise. Anything, anything that makes it unique. Um, I have owned a half of a banana in the past where it was just um, this direction, but you could still kind of see the markings in the inside of that half of the banana. So it wasn't just one that was cut off. It actually was made painted and baked that way. Um, you know, if you have any questions, I'm trying to think of any of those um, things that I would mention for, uh, for the stone fruit. What's fun also is if you find one and it just doesn't happen to have that little stem piece in it, don't let that stop you from, from picking up the piece. You can cut a little stem off of a shrub or off of a tree and go ahead and stick that right down in there. That's not that's not what you're buying or not buying your piece of stone fruit for. It's really all about the color, whether it goes in your bowl or if it's something that you're looking for. I have seen displays where there were a, bowl, a huge bowl of just grapes, of all different kinds of grapes, or a huge bowl of just white grapes it was really stunning. So it's all about what you are looking for, what you come across, what you find. Um, sometimes you can find certain pieces and then trade up from what you have or trade with friends. Um, you know, sometimes if you go and you just, oh my gosh, there's a whole bowl of, of lemons, but you don't need a lemon. You know, if you can afford it, maybe pick those up. And then when you find somebody else that's also interested in collecting stone fruit, you can trade with them for one of the other pieces. So just kind of a really fun collection. I love the colors. I love how they go with our, our paints, our, our warm woods, um, all of those kinds of things. And they just make a really neat addition to our prim, prim vines. So take care everyone. If you have any questions, uh, please consider checking to make sure that you are a subscriber on our channel. I've heard with some people some funny things happening where some people get unsubscribed on occasion. So make sure to check that you are still a subscriber to our channel. If you get something out of our content, I hope you'll give us a thumbs up. 
please consider also sharing with your other prim friends. And I will make sure to put the name of that um, Facebook group that we have. I think it's Tweed Thistle Primitives Stone Fruit is the name of the group. But I will make sure, I, you know, I wrote it so, many, so long ago, so many years ago, that it's just not on the tip of my tongue. Kind of like, you know, calling somebody on the phone that you call all the time when you just hit that redial. So again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment below. I do read all of your comments. Um, my little Daisy has had a little issue with uh, a, a, an ouchie on her back foot. And so I've kind of been worried about her. And of course, where I work, um, we just went through Easter. So lots of things going on. But boy, April is just going to be a huge month for videos. Next week, um, I will be doing a video from Gather Treasures. A couple weeks after that, I will be at doing videos, hopefully, if my vehicle is back and all is well. I do have a loaner right now, so that's great. Um, if, if it all works out, I will be at uh, Curry's Antiques, Linda Miller, Miller House Antiques, and the Buggy Seat to do videos for their open houses that are happening. And then also we'll be doing videos before the opening of Simple Goods and Earlier Times. So if any of those, all phenomenal open houses, fantastic shows, um, I'll try to put links up also uh, so that you can watch some of the videos from years past of those shows. If you are from out of town, any one of them are worth coming into town for, honestly. So I'll make sure that some of that information and those dates are online. The best thing that you can do for some of our local shows is go ahead and subscribe to their Facebook pages because then you'll always know if there's anything that happens with weather or any other kind of conditions that would cause um, a delay or a change of a date. So make sure you check those out. And who knows, maybe you're watching this video a year from now. And again, the dates that I tell you may not be the same. So I try not to put the actual days here. So take care, everybody. That was supposed to be a short video, and I'm not sure that's what it ended up to be. Do you collect stone fruit? Do you collect the stone vegetables, the nuts? What do you collect? What have you found? I would love to hear about it. Take care, and we will see you in the next one.